All right, we're on. And thank you all for attending. Uh, today I'm going to give a little bit of a teaching about um, uh, the effect of the emotional body. And uh, the most common uh, thing inside of humanity is that uh, I'd say 99% of humanity has a, uh, an emotional body that's based in their solar plex. Yep. So it's based in their solar plex. Yeah, and the solar plex is, if you look at this, the solar plex is the sixth ray, yeah? And that's an esoteric view. It's a teaching that I give, yeah? And not a lot of people go by this. You know, it's my teaching, yeah? And so uh, just deal with me as a teacher and deal with me as the way in which I interpret things, yeah? And so just kind of let everything go that you know about chakras. <coughs> and consider that we have seven chakras, and in those chakras, uh, there is power, there is an influence, a force, yeah? And that force can go out or it can go in, into the person, selfishly uh, drawing things into them. But, but the one thing that does this is the sixth ray, the solar plex, yeah? And the problem is that the solar plex is the, the agent of humanity. Yeah. It's, it's the basic thing that all of humanity has is a sixth ray emotional body. Yeah. And having an emotional body that is the sixth ray, then that means that you, you're, you're very connected with what's known as the astral plane or astral body. Yeah. And that is very emotional and it's extremely psychic. Yeah, it has influences. It plays them on things. And it's where harmfulness comes from. It's the origin of harm. Yeah? It's the seat of evil. It's the manifestation of glamour. It's, it's all things gone wrong. Yeah? But it's nature. Literally, it's nature. Yeah? It's just that you only get half of nature. Yeah, you don't get all of it. You only get half of it. Yeah. So when you look at these chakras, basically what's going on is there is a dominant psychic religious organization on earth. Yeah. And it's an influence of witchcraft. It's an influence of a coven of Isis. It's an influence of Mary. You know, it's an influence of in every religion, whether it be the Hebrew religion, you know, the influence maybe of Shakna or the influence that is in, uh, under the Jesus relationship of Mary. All of that is very religious and it's mainly based in history. It's based on goddesses. Yeah, that's where we get the idea of God from goddesses. Yeah, so goddesses is the, the origin and they speak of themselves in the, in the term of astrology. Yeah, they see themselves as goddesses of planets, governing planets. So this has gone on for hundreds of thousands of years since there's been a brain and a person could talk. The channeling of the sixth ray came through humanity and they chose which of them is God. And because women have babies, yeah, and women have a lot of things yeah, that go on, but especially the one thing that's different is that they have babies, yeah? So if you look at all origins, all origins of religion, it's the, the goddess, the mother goddess, the Aphrodite, you know, all these different things that are the influence of where we sit, actually, our foundation in that sixth ray, that, that uh, emotional psychic influence, it's guided by that religion. And it's permeated every religion. It permeated the Christian religion. You know, Easter is Ashtar. That's a female, a goddess. Yeah? The relationship to, to Jesus isn't about being on a cross during Easter time or even during his birth. Yeah? It's about other things. Yeah? Things that are glamour. Yeah? Things that come from the sixth ray. Yeah? So all religions you know, are based on this other side of religion, a dark side, a lie, an illusion, a mistake. And it was a cult. 
And it grew and it grew and it grew and became humanity. Um, Native American Indians are based on it. Yeah? The Hindu is based on it. The Indian is based on it. Even Tibetans are based on it. It is the foundation of the ignorant mind. And when we have so much sixth ray, yeah, it, it exudes a recapitulation of our nature, who we are, what we are. But we're only, we're only receiving, because this isn't a true God. This is half God. This is a lesser God. This is a demigod. Yeah? And we can look at all religions, and all we see is freaking gods all over the place. Now, it doesn't matter what you're in. In India, whether, you know, it's all about gods, lots of gods. And yet there are no bunch of gods. This place would be a whole lot more harmonious if there were so many gods. Yeah? But it's not. So in reality, we only have one god, and we've been misdirected through this psychic influence, through our solar plex, through the emotional body of the solar plex. And we all g are born this way. We have an attachment to life, to things, you know, and we look at life as temporary, we're going to die any time. You know, all those things are based on the consciousness that comes from that goddess. Not from God, but from the goddess. Yeah? So here we have these influences down here in an unhealthy realm. You know, we have a six, a five, and a seven. And the five used to be the ability to reveal God. And where do you see that? You see that in Shiva. God. And that's on the other side of this whole thing. The side where we have a healthy side. We look over here. Oh, my God. Look at that. Yeah. The avatars have a fifth ray in the brow. They have a first ray. Christ, Buddha, Krishna, all of them. They represent this. The, the reality of it all being together in one being. Not separate. Where on the other side, it says, well, I have to channel God. You have to become in faith with God. Yeah? Whether it be Jesus, you've got to go through Mary. Yeah? Whether it be Buddha, you've got to go through Tara. Yeah? Whether it be Hindu, you've got to go through Lakshmi. Yeah? And I it's not true. It's not how you get there at all. You go directly to God. Yeah? And there's a natural occurrence that goes on. The chakras naturally take you to God. They take you to God. But you're born, in every case, you're born with a sixth ray emotional body. Yeah? But if God comes and forgives you, you get the compassion, the empathy, the, the influences of the energy that comes from God, which isn't the mother, yeah? but the father. And you feel protected. Yeah? You feel that things are going to work out because literally there's someone freaking in charge of this thing and not half of it, a demigod. And we go from religion to religion. We even choose baptism over Christ. Yeah? We choose Catholics and the Mother Mary over Christ. Yeah? We choose John the Baptist over Christ. Yeah? We choose Islam over Christ. Yeah, all of that is based on this process of being unhealthy, just being freaking unhealthy. Yeah? So that, but it has a psychic historical influence to us. Yeah? It's a historical influence. It's important to understand it's a historical influence. That's why we don't want to look back at the past. Because we ate people. We sacrificed people for this goddess. That's what made us do it. That's why the Aztecs are gone. That's why all of Egypt is gone. That's why at the end of the Egyptian period are cookbooks for cooking babies and old people. This is a, a race of people who built the pyramid? How could they get like that? Well, you heard of Isis, haven't you? You've heard of the, all the demigods and the pharaohs of Egypt. Yeah? And the closer it got to Christ walking this earth, their door closed. 
and there was no there was no following no nothing it was an empty river of illusion and delusion and glamour yeah it led to Greece it led to Rome it led to the Pope all the glamours we have today come from the past yeah and they're all based on channeling divine supposedly but it wasn't it was an oracle and 90 percent of the time it was female and that wasn't because females had a specific thing is because they could use their energy quicker and the cult you separate people into two different factions and all of a sudden you're going to create a cult and the and the ladies start believing that they are the cult they are the goddesses they are the incarnation they are the manifestation and what do the guys do we are homosexual we are gay and we want to be women what well that's where we're at that's where we're at yeah and you try and make sense of it i just did yeah it is common sense you know, when you're, when you're in heaven and you see this and it is what it is. It is exactly what it is. So imagine a six-way emotional body, yeah? This type of vehicle is found common in all people, even those people you love, yeah? There is a broad general appreciation for the good qualities of many and the positive evaluation of others it might be called feeling of emotional kinship wait that's the wrong one started at the end here we go bang there six ray etheric physical body yeah so in the physical body the body itself in a six ray form is is loose yeah it's not that strong <coughs> it has a lot of liquid in it because it's predominantly lymphatic yeah and for channeling it requires the lymph glands the minor chakras for channeling the more you have those active in minor chakras which is a the delusion of grandeur the more you're sixth ray the more you think this and all these delusions the more you boast in that way life after life after life you know you're affecting your glands you know and they affect your lymph glands because this is what you speak this is what you do this is what you are yeah so it creates a lazy person people we know to be like kings and stuff like that yeah and they have all the, the, you know, they overeat, you know, and they're lazy and they lie and they're under all these things. Yeah. Because they have a sixth ray physical body. And it's rare. The, it's a very, the f sixth ray physical body is a not a common sixth ray reality in, in the world. It's more common to have fifth ray. It's more common to have seventh ray. It's more common to have third ray. Yeah. Even fourth ray. Yeah than it is the sixth ray. Even though sixth ray is one of the most powerful influences in America, in, in anywhere in the world. Yeah. So it, it affects strong solar plex emphasis, emotional, visceral reactions, body very responsive to astral current, the brain predominantly the servant of the astral body, the body easily subject to addictions, Great physical attachment, physical tenacity and persistence, a fiery physical nature. Yeah? These are A types. Yeah? These are these are people who jump off cliffs. These are people who do this kind of shit. Yeah? Because they have no connection to the real connection of reality. So while they're going through this, in order to get to the next stage, many lives down the road, yeah, where they become a king because they've received so much acclaim for doing really crazy ass things. Really crazy ass things, useless things. Yeah. Like fighting in a war or, you know, becoming a hero, you know, useless freaking things when it comes down to it. Yeah. But you get something for it. You get something for it. Yeah. And it's physical tenacity and persistence. You do that. You do it. You have great physical attachment. You do that. You do it. Yeah. 
You love the king, you love the queen, you fight for the land, you're a patriot, yeah? Body easily subject to addictions, yeah? Because now you're obsessed in the physical world with your physical body to carry out your actions in a fiery physical nature, yeah? This is not a common sixth ray quality, it's not. But it channels into people. If you follow someone, a rare person who's got this sort of thing, and they're usually leaders who have this inner process of being like that, but they don't really physically like do it. Like Trump. He acts as though he is uh, subject to addictions. Well, we know he's addicted. He's addicted to Coca-Cola. He's addicted to so much in the, the process of, of caffeine. You know, he can't get enough. He takes Sudafed over and over and over. Yeah, physical attachment to things. I won't even leave the office. I won't stop being president. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't lose. Physical tenacity and persistence. Yeah, and a fiery physical nature. You know, he he doesn't care calling anybody ugly, an asshole, an idiot. You know, uh, go to jail, go to jail, beat that person up, and they do. You know, there's rare qualities and characteristics in people in the world that carry this sixth ray, but they're really the biggest evilest ones that carry it to the physical body, yeah? So then you look and see what happens when they get to the emotional body. It's extremely common. Tendency to emotional glamours. Devotion, emotional dependency, emotionalism, reactivity, rapid arousal, undue emphasis by lack of emotional control, personalism, filled with desire rather than unselfish love, emotional persistence, emotional intensity, impossible fanaticism, aspirational strength and intensity, intense adherence and attachments, one-pointed emotional orientation. It's not uncommon for people to, you know, want to be their own self, yeah? Even though as an artist, you know, they go, wow, I, I am so unique. I am just as unique as possible. But every single one of them have tattoos up and down their body. And every single one of them wear the same kind of crazy-ass hat. And every single one of them have the same kind of crazy-ass vest. And the same kind of crazy-ass shirt. And the same kind of crazy-ass skirts. You know, but yet, they're supposedly unique. Could it be that they're actually channels of the smallest kind? Yeah? And they're expressing the lowest part of nature, which is channeling. So they have no gifts whatsoever. You know, like they're squawking in a microphone and, you know, saying I'm an artist, you know. Or they're throwing paint on a board, you know. Or, or so good, technically, that they can duplicate a picture. Yeah? That doesn't make a person an artist. Makes a person an artist is kindness, love, you know, compassion, empathy. You know? That's art. Yeah? It's very, very difficult. And it doesn't require channeling. Yeah? It requires a lack of pride rather than a, a development of pride. Yeah? So all these things, they have strong tendencies to create a personality. Yeah? Let's see. Six-ray emotions are reactive. Second-ray emotional field is more likely to share and radiate love and increasing unselfishness as evolution proceeds. Now, in this chakric situation, every single person, every single person is this way. Every single person, you know, it doesn't matter if a person says, but I'm Asian. I, every single person, I'm telling you. you know? It doesn't mean if the person says, but I, I, like, I like grapes. I don't like other things. I must be unique. Yeah? Other people like other things, and that, they must be unique. No, you're wrong. Every single person is an essence of light. Just light. Pure light. Yeah? And it comes out of the mind of God through compassion and empathy and love and direction. You know? yeah. And all of that comes in a healthy body. 
It naturally comes in a healthy body. But due to the fact that we're not that healthy, we have this unhealthy body and we're dominated by that solar plex. Yeah, and that is what is happening. Our, the influence of just having that, the, uh, the lack of ability to flow with the second ray is because it's actually, it knows all the weaknesses of the second ray. So it pushes those buttons as a lifestyle. As a lifestyle. Yeah? It's glamour. It's selfish. You know, it's anti-second ray. Anti-Christ. Anti-God. Anti-nature. Anti-love. Yeah? Anti-caring. Even though on this other side it's, oh, but I care. I care. I really do. I'm very emotional. I care. I don't want to take that away. I, I am so emotionally tied up in my situation. You know, I must love. Nope, sorry, not a bit of love. Yeah? It has nothing to do with love. Yeah? And it takes a long time to get to that place because everybody is built with this unhealthy package. Yeah? That unhealthy package. Yeah? And then I come in and I add tools and I add puja and I add my presence and I give my teaching and I'm actually causing your chakras to transmute and not be like the mother, but be like the father. Very different. Yeah? You're low, it's not a bad thing. It's just not the thing. It's not what it is that created us. It's not what it is that blesses us. It's not what it is that Christ talks about. Yeah? It's what others talk about. Yeah? Lesser teachers. Because yeah? this whole process of using these lower chakras is to take the energy of the soul and make it do things that are not good. Yeah? Like, let's say, you have an opportunity. Yeah? Well, because you're not spontaneously caring, spontaneously giving, spontaneously loving, then you will question whether or not you should give, whether or not it's the right thing, whether or not all these questions come up. Many, 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 many layers of questions come up, and those are called walls. And they're manifested in, as the tearing down of the soul is happening. Does that make sense? Yeah? Because the emotional body is in control of your mind, lower mind. Yeah? So any good act, any good thing, and you're always asked to do good things because you're a good person. Yeah? But the doubting mind comes in and goes, <laughs> creates all kinds of chaos. And that's what forces that fourth ray into the brow. That <coughs> forces you to see the world as conflict. And you can't really know whether or not it's trusting. You can't get the vision of the fifth ray. You're unhealthy. Yeah? You can't get the energy coming from the third ray because you got a fifth ray in your sacral center. Yeah? Because you're unhealthy. Yeah? And you don't know any of this is actually going on. But it's a metaphysical law. You can't get out of it. You can go to Mars, and you're still going to have this problem magnified by 100. By 100. Because you're going to be, in Mars, you're going to be suffering so badly, mutating so badly. Children will come out of this so badly. People will try and come home and be so bad. The viruses will be so overwhelming. Yeah? Bad, bad. All so many bad ideas. All for money. All for money. You're just being led into a scheme to make sure that we can get out there and mine planets like we did here, that we've made illegal now. And we don't need that shit. We don't need it. We don't need another colonization. None of that. But that's all over here in this unhealthy body. It tells you that stuff. Yeah? Yeah. So that, that, that gets weird. And it, it causes an enormous process inside of humanity. And it's mainly because humanity has a six-ray emotional body. Six-ray emotional body is more intense but more fickle than the emotional body upon a second ray. Six ray may incline to a series of temporary intense loyalties. So here we are. We are going to the moon. The richest people, or not the moon, but Mars, and the richest people on Earth is putting all their money into that. Even their future lives are put into it. Some of them aren't going to manifest the colonization until they're dead. 
Elon Musk will be dead. Yeah? Yeah? The guy from Amazon will be dead by the time we actually get into 2050 when we've got enormous numbers of people and we're having children and the, wor and the worst possible outcomes are starting to take place. They'll be dead. But they'll be raged in, in glory and satisfaction over the fact they've got you there while they're alive before all hell breaks loose. Yeah? So humanities, the, these people are stuck in a very strict intention. Yeah? But humanity is not in that way. They have fickle, temporary focus. Yeah? So most of humanity do not see themselves on Mars. They think it's nothing more than a movie, nothing more than a book, a fantasy. But they go, oh, it's a possibility. And they keep buying everything that makes it possible for these people to get to Mars. Yeah? And that's because we're being misled. Not because we're buying the things that they have, but we're being misled because we don't understand what is going on. Yeah? And what effect that has on the Earth. We're putting mm -hmm. our, all of our energy into the Earth being destroyed. Either by nature or by war, by humanity. But that is what these people believe. That they need an alternative planet to live on. So, with a healthy process, with these chakras going upward, yeah, people start getting the influences, the psychic influence, and an awareness. By the year 2050, I don't think many people are going to be booking a trip to Mars, even though the plan is heavy duty right now. But the plan is changing dramatically, yeah, changing dramatically. When they first started talking about this about 10 years ago, you know, the thing was that we're going to put human beings on Mars right off the bat. You know, fly them there, get them on Mars, and do their thing. Yeah? But now I've seen the project outcome and, and the most latest projected way in which it's going to manifest. Yeah? And it's actually going to be all robotic. You know? Not a human being. For the first five years. Yeah? And all that time, buildings will be made, solar panels will be put up, and, and robotic you know, domes and all kinds of things will be put together, and structures will be ready for when they come. They'll build the first place for them to uh, grow things and do the things they need. Yeah? So that'll be after a five-year period. Yeah? And their plan was to put people there, humans there, first. Yeah, but now they're thinking robots. And the way it's going to come to is that they'll do a landing and then they'll have people coming back and they're going to be really sick. And they're going to be really sick when they get there. And they won't be able to work because they're really sick. Even though they have 30% of the weight to carry, to move, to get around, their bones will become so fragile. Their blood circulation will be almost upside down because of the gravitational pulse it requires for us to have what we have. For us to have emotional stability, we need the Schumann wave that's found on Earth, not found on Mars. There's no Schumann wave. There's no pulse, electromagnetic pulse whatsoever on Mars. Yeah. So that's, uh, these are really bad things for the energetic body, the physical energetic body. But when you go there with this consciousness, yeah, and you have that fifth ray down in your sacral center, you can't see any of this. All you can see is your plans working out, using engineers and science and, and elevating all these things, but you're using, you're using the energy of getting rid of God, because these are all atheists, these people who are doing this. They're all atheists. Elon Musk is a blatant atheist, yeah? And if anybody should not be an atheist, you think Elon Musk can't be an atheist. You give him all the delusions that a, a, a demigod should get, which is faith as though the person's like God, as though they're doing something spiritual for you. But they're not. They're doing something radical. And it seems like spiritual because it's science. It's just science. And that's that fifth ray down in the sacral center. So to do that, <clears throat> they have to take away. What goes into the fifth ray is the evil spirit. 
It doesn't mean that these people are evil. It just means that a plan is afoot. A plan. And it takes up all the time and energy that should be put toward Earth. The saving of all the children, the ending of all disease, the elimination of needing vaccines, the elimination of all the suffering on Earth. All of it, all the money that's going into Mars should be going to Earth. And we see that it's available. It's available. Yeah. And they could do their rockets and all their science research on the moon and all the things they think they want to do. But they can't get the gang-busting minerals that you would get, that you get out of Mars. You know. So that's the purpose, is to enslave you, your families, your future, to go there and be miners. Miners, yeah? You watch the video, it's online, you could see it, and it literally doesn't show you anything about their work. It doesn't show you any of that. But it starts to show a little bit that there are international bases on Mars focused on mining, only mining. And that America kind of starts off with a community and thinking, well, we're just going to have a whole bunch of people live there, have a holiday in, you know, all these nice little things, easy peasy, go and come and go every five years, you know, no big deal. Yeah, that's such a diluted sense of reality. Yeah, but it is what what people are buying. Yeah, they're putting their time and energy into that. But that's not imagine the biggest psychic force is pushing people to think that QAnon is controlling the process of who elects who, yeah? And that the rich are moving us to think we need to colonize on Mars, you know? That's like anti-Earth, anti-everybody, anti-human, anti-Earth, anti-everything, yeah? You know, so it's an enormous amount of energy that moves into the Earth, and we are, if we had a second ray emotional body, which you're all going to get, every single person is going to get a second ray emotional body. That's called the integration of the soul, personality and soul. When that happens, every vehicle you've got gets integrated with the second ray only. Yeah? And it becomes predominantly second ray, whether it be your mind, your physical body, your emotional body, your personality, everything gets infused with the second ray. And all your chakras get healed. Yeah? And, but we, no one knows any of this stuff, but it's going to happen. It's the influence of what's going to happen. Yeah? But how it's going to happen is that first we're going to go through an enormous, enormous indebtedness due to the fact that we're in this cycle of illusion. Yeah? You know, we have unhealthy chakras. We have to change that. That's my work. I'm trying to get people to change how they emotionally react to the world around them so we can shut this door a little bit at a time every day. Yeah? And I'm here. I'm the monitor. I'm the guy. I feel it. I sense it. It kills me. Yeah? I have to absorb it. I have to fight the demons until they're gone and that person's saved and hopefully they'll never do it again. You know, but it's just the way it goes. Yeah. And the choice is to listen to what I'm saying and do this on your own. When the demon's coming through you, don't let them have any focus. Don't let them do what they're doing. You know? and, and sit back and be quiet. Sit back and meditate. Raise yourself up into the second ray. You could do it. Yeah? And the outcome of that, imagine now you're going upward, upward from, from that horrible emotional tragic, dramatic scenario of who knows what, but it was, yeah? And if you could just stop at that moment and know that that right there is the time you close the door to demons. Because if you don't, you're going to hand them to Jesus. Does that make sense? Yeah? Because Jesus is everybody's Lord. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter where you are, doesn't matter if you're a dog or a cat or a tree. Everything has this arrangement of chakras. Every single thing. Minerals have this arrangement. Dogs have this arrangement. They don't have seven chakras, but they have the same rays. Yeah? So all this is all about raising up the astral plane. And that closes the door. 
It closes the door. And you stop the suffering of Jesus the Christ. Yeah? It's an everyday thing. Jesus suffers every single day. Yeah? There's not a, a moment that it doesn't happen until this happens. Until this comes together. And um, yeah, I'm not saying it. <coughs> oh, me, oh, my, oh. <laughs> you know, help me out here. But it's a fact of reality. You know? That you, when you get this energy, you're getting it from Jesus. And, but you have to lift yourself up to where you're actually offering that to him rather than a channeling of personal, selfish situations and how you react to it, how you expected it to be differently, how it pisses you off. All those things is your mind, your physical body, your emotional body, all those things. They become currents, and they go into the earth because it's a downward spin. Look at this. These things are going down. They're going down. Where is down? Earth. All the children. Why aren't they fed? Why are the poor on the street? Why are there wars? Why is there suffering? Why are people dying from everything? Why is there more bullets going on? than ever before in streets and towns and cities and stores. Yeah? Yeah. It, it's because of this. Yeah. And it's really a matter of closing that door. Yeah? Because there is an earth that we're involved with and all this is in peril. Every day, every moment, every person is a big thing. Yeah? You just have no idea whether or not you're the past that is your curse continues yeah and it has to do with a, a dogmatic religion of the past that existed all history of the past nobody was without a cult nobody yeah it was it was the dominant reality of our society in all the world yeah so when we're knee-jerking reaction yeah, it's coming from that so when we cut it off, you know, when we, since I'm sitting here and telling you this, and you know that I exist, yeah, then that changes your opportunity, yeah, and that can move or motivate, you know, the influence of the second ray to come about. So let's look at the second ray. So when you go up, the secondary emotional body, this is what comes into you, becomes calm, gentle, serene, and patient. This is from meditation, not from attachment, from detachment. Detachment is not that I don't care. It's not that at all. It's about relaxing. And you detach. And it comes back around differently. And you have understanding. And, uh, you know, it clarifies why you're not so attached. And that time goes by, and a karmic element, a force of God, changes the circumstance right before your eyes. And you go, boy, I'm glad I didn't do that. And you're free from putting another stake in the grave caused by you. Yeah? It is what it is. So the second ray has easy contact with others. It's sensitive. Fear and suffering can be overwhelming. It's non-reactive. Identification with others, empathy, compassion, protectiveness, wide band of emotional responsiveness. The heart goes out to many. Yeah? And this is what happens when you go in with Christ. Yeah? Because Christ sees both the, the, the bottom half and the upper half. Has all that. It's not a demigod or, or, or a, a deluded, you know, imagine a, um, a false prophet is what holds that whole influence on the lower chakras. That's where all false prophecy comes from. And it's a delusion of grandeur. It's a glamour. Yeah. And it's in everything all over the place. We have kings and queens and everything that comes from that. Yeah. So when we just meditate and we just take the tools and we take the consideration that this reaction is not heartfelt. Yeah? And this is going to cause harm. Even if, it's, even if it's a little thing, yeah? 
the reaction itself goes somewhere. Yeah? And where does it go? It goes into earth. It doesn't matter what you're looking at. It doesn't matter if it's a car or a person or a plant or anything. It goes into the earth. Yeah? So the only way you can fix that is by staying calm. And the same outcome will take place. Without you going through all that, your calm voice starts talking and it says the very same things the sixth ray voice would have said, but it says it in such a way that it's attractive and it's understandable. Yeah? And it fixes the elements of things that cause it to have a problem going forth, getting it done, getting anything done. Yeah? Every single thing is done. If it's lifted up like that, yeah, then the second ray comes in and takes over. Yeah? And then and this is the same way in all people, places, and things. So imagine this doesn't just go identification with others, empathy, compassion, protectiveness, wide band of emotional responsiveness, and heartfelt goes out to many. It goes out to everything. Yeah? So that process is in reality the Buddhaic field. Yeah? That's what's closed up. When people don't do this, what I'm saying, when they don't do it, yeah, and they hold the astral plane as a sixth ray expression and not a second ray, because the astral plane comes from the second ray, not the sixth ray. That's where it comes from. It's the Budaic field. It's the second ray. So it says here, the astral body is archetypically resonant with the Budaic plane and is meant to be an organ of love and eventually of loving understanding when Budaic substance replaces astral substance. Yeah? So it's a matter of, of keeping it going like this. Yeah? And that's just taking refuge. It's taking refuge. You do it knowing that it's not you actually doing it. It's you having reverence toward the teacher. And then you get the blessing and it helps you see it differently because you could see through the teacher, the calmness, through the teacher, the response, you know, how would Jesus do it? Yeah. The true disciple really has that experience. Yeah. Does that make sense? And it's normal. It's totally normal. Yeah. But what happens? No emotional barriers are up. Energy is exchanged. When the secondary emotional field is highly developed, love and radiance are poured forth and easily received. Yeah. So imagine if that's not going on, yeah? Instead, it's anger and frustration on a day-to-day -day basis. Day-to-day, -day, from morning to night, yeah? And just, you know, just not being able to be in this place because we're not in that place. But through Christ, we can go to that place, yeah? We can go outside these lower chakras, yeah? These lower chakras which we're all kind of sitting in, yeah? And we have devotion, we have, well, we go to church, you know, sixth ray, fifth ray, well, we go to church, seventh ray, well, we're organized, well, I believe in a certain religion, I was born Catholic, you know, I was born Jewish, that's really powerful, yeah, I'm born American Indian, well, that's really something, yeah? All these things are just illusions of this lower nature, you know, giving you strong feelings about that concreteness, attachment, to something, your religion, yourself, your identity of some kind, yeah? And it's really not true. It's not true. The healthier side is that you have a fourth ray down at the base, which is you. You, yeah? A beautiful, beautiful angel, yeah? All grown up, flowering, giving fruit, manifesting gestures of love, you know, creating energy, a vitality into the earth. You're a deva. A deva. And what do devas do? Devas create earths. Earths. And that's why we have this earth. That's why we have trees. That's why we have butterflies. Because of you. Every living human being moves this energy for co-creation. Yeah, evolution. Yeah? And we're stuck in a science thinking, well, it's evolution, all this and that, you know. That's counter-religion, you know, all this and that. And it's not true, yeah? Because 
God made it and we have to support it. We have to support it. That's why it's important for us to become divine. Yeah? Because then we become caretakers of the earth and we change everything from war to no war. Yeah? From children not being taken care of. Yeah? And everybody having understanding. Yeah? When teachings are given, they're not responding from the sixth ray real strong because they're in the refuge. And the Sangha takes the place of the astral plane. Yeah? The will of every person who's in the Sangha, who chooses to do this sort of thing, it makes it stronger for all the people in the Sangha to pull it off. It's hard to do on your own. Yeah? It's a collective body. Yeah? And that's what builds. That's what's, gonna, that's what's manifesting. But we're on earth right now because of this deluded, you know, oh, everybody put your, all your thoughts and ideas into going to Mars or all these delusions, you know. And in doing that, it leaves a lot of people thinking, you know, well, I'm not going to be a part of that. That's going to be like after I'm dead, you know. And, you know, life is just nothing, you know. And it's probably, like they say, the earth is just going to be destroyed, you know, and it's going to go bad and there's going to be all these wars and, you know, not good thoughts, not good thoughts. And those in perils go into the earth because we're not seeing the future as it really is. We're being told we're in a future we have to escape from because it's really bad. It's not true. And we're told when the coming of Christ comes, it's the end of the earth. That's not true either. But in a planet that only lies, wouldn't that be the lie? Yeah, the opposite of the truth? Yeah. That this is about saving the planet and teaching you how to save the planet. Because right now, you're going to live through the next 20 years. And that, that hardship, that process of hardship, dealing with the fact that, oh man, it's getting hotter and drier, and we have no lakes and no water. And we used to have a lot of big farms. There's hardly any farms anymore. Yeah. And that all happens within three to five years. It's not about changing people's diet. It's not about things like that yet. But that will happen. Yeah. But the main thing is that there's just no water because we have been duped. Yeah. And misused so many of the elements. Because when we put in peril into the earth, yeah, and this has been going on for a long time. It's what destroyed Aztecs, it was destroyed the Anastasi, it destroyed the American Indians, it destroyed all the world. Yeah. And we're just in this la-la land thinking, well, that's all over with, and now we're all going to be just fine and dandy. It's Disneyland now. Yeah? And it's not true. We still have this strong astral body, and it's creating a horrible outcome. And the outcome is that fact that when American Indians say rain dance, we can do a rain dance. We can create rain. Yeah? It's true. Yeah? But the bigger truth is the fact that it's a drought, and we have done wrong. Yeah, we have behaved wrong. Yeah, we are in the wrong place because we're led to the wrong place. Yeah, we are not right in our nature. Yeah, we need to calm down. We need to get right. We need to be more peaceful, so we can bring peace, and peace brings rain. Yeah, meditating and being more spiritual rather than constantly in conflict and war. Because if you look at the history of American Indians, there was a lot of conflict and war. Yeah? So there's no real support system in this process of lacking and in peril. On all levels, Native Americans and all the people who have come to America is in a state of imperil. If you cross over the border, you're in a state of imperil. Are you going to be caught? Be thrown back? Yeah? yeah? Everybody's in a state of imperil. If you're gay, you know, are you going to be kicked out of school? Yeah? Yeah, everything is in a state of imperil yeah. because we are not in a place of getting out of the emotional body. Yeah. In order to get out of the emotional body, quite often, it requires hardship. It's the worst thing. It's the worst thing. It's the last thing I want to see. I'd rather be building monasteries and offering food and healing and doing wellness centers across the world, you know. But the truth is, 
that it requires hardship for the process of the emotional body to be triggered and for it to move upward into a higher level. Yeah. And that sucks. You know, because this is out of control of humanity. It's out of control of greed. It's out of control of so many things. It's under the control of lower nature. The lack of elements that are taken away due to imperil. If we have a lot of imperil, we're going to have nothing more than disease and impurities in our body, in our life, in our environment, and in our friends. If we have these thoughts, if we behave like this, and we're in QAnon now. We voted in Trump. We've lived through almost two years of a virus. Yeah? You know, so there's a major situation. Well, this is what's going to happen and is happening right now with the outcome of weather. The West is in crisis. More than 50% of the region is now under what's classified as exceptional drought, the highest emergency tier possible. Last month, the governor placed 41 of the state's 58 counties in a drought emergency. Drought emerge in the American West. And much of that long-term drought is centered right over the Colorado River, which means giant cities like LA and rural farms alike could see a strain on their water supply. In, this in 2000, a drought began that now, 20 years later, is the most severe drought since gauges were installed on the river in 1906. And we now actually have a new term for this. It's a hot drought. So higher temperatures dry out the earth, and, what, and that evaporation is the cause of this decline in flow. Good news here is since about 1980, American water use has actually gone down. Even in growing American cities in the Southwest, total consumption has gone down, despite pretty big increases in population. But worldwide, irrigated agriculture uses upwards of 70% of water in, in rivers and municipalities use much, much less, 20%. Dope has been known to use the, the least amount of water than people throughout the whole United States. It's just because we live in a, in a desert area, you're more aware of how much you use. And so the, the use is very little. Okay, so we're down at my field. This is uh, my blue corn that I planted here. All of these are dry farmed. I don't do any irrigation. And the technique we use is um, you clear off an area. But you'll dig a hole down about maybe eight to 10 inches deep, get uh, maybe eight or 10 kernels of corn. You toss in there the wet moisture that you've taken out. You push them back in. Then you cover with the dry soil. And that's dry farming. His garden, he's never watered this field. We have seeds that are being passed on from generation to generation, so they're adapted to this uh, dry, dry climate. The corn's been with the OP at least several thousand years. I think the lesson to learn is that you have to live within your environment. And I think that's how the natives have survived in these areas because they were sustainable. And we know this country. We need to be ready for some really big changes coming at us that are frankly outside of our comprehension. This is how we make the best out of a bad situation and stand by those who end up facing the biggest changes. Our mission is to build farms and cities all over the world so people have access to fresh, great tasting, highly nutritious food. Typically in indoor growing, the roots sit in water and one tries to oxygenate the water. Our key inventor realized that if we missed nutrition to the root structure, then the roots have a better oxygenation. Arrow farm people say, sunless, wait, plants need sun. In fact, the plants don't need yellow spectrum, so we're able to reduce our energy footprint by doing things like reducing certain types of spectrum. The sophisticated climate controlled system cuts the growing cycle in half. There's all these stresses on our planet. 70% of our freshwater contamination comes from agriculture. About 70% of our freshwater usage goes to agriculture. One third of our arable land has been degraded in the last 40 years. All these macro trends point to the fact that we need a new way to feed our planet. Listen to the plants very carefully to try and understand what they're telling us and try and optimize all these different qualities of the plant. It's a tough business, but it's one that's going to stay and it's going to have a bigger and bigger impact. Across the American West, there simply isn't enough water to go around. 
and the full heat of summer is just getting started. From the Rio Grande to the Rocky Mountains, a mega drought is underway. It's shaping up to be the worst water crisis in generations. The darker the red, the worse it is. Reservoirs that store water for millions are below normal and are projected to hit historic lows soon. And this is a region-wide concern. From last spring to this winter, Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada, and Utah, each had their driest stretch in 126 years. Enough. Would you drink that? People have dumped in this river forever. It's like we're in a cesspool. My tub, you should see it, it's brown. Lead poisoning is terrible and terrifying. No amount of exposure is safe. And there's evidence that years after we got it out of paint, gas, and more, it contributed to a drastic drop in crime in the 90s. The city has switched back to cleaner water, but the effects will last decades. The city could save money on water. Flint would stop buying water from Detroit and join a new regional water system. And as a temporary measure, Flint would use water from the Flint River. The switch happened in 2014. Here's the Flint. Flint. Here, here, here. And who decided to do this exactly is under intense debate. But regardless of blame, the story gets worse. Residents saw and tasted the dirty water and started complaining. Water's brown, um, has a bad odor. I'm afraid to even um, feed it to my cat or my dogs. We should not have to pay for the water. It's nasty. But the city claimed federal tests showed the water was safe. An employee at the Environmental Protection Agency leaked a Michigan report to a local activist which showed the water had higher than normal lead levels. The city's response? Flint told the woman the lead came from her plumbing. It took an outside investigation by Virginia Tech researchers that found elevated lead levels in the water for the state to admit there was a problem in September 2015. So the corrosion's eating up the pipes, it's eating up the iron pipes, it's causing main bricks, it's causing discolored water. In about 20% of the homes, there's just too much lead. In October 2015, the government bought water filters for its citizens and switched back to water from Detroit. Before all this, 2.1% of the city's children had high blood lead levels after it was 4%. For kids under 5 in the most affected zip codes, it was 6.3%. Why did Flint poison its citizenry? Under emergency managers from the state, it wanted to save money. The West is in crisis. More than 50% of the region... Wanted to save money, isn't that nice? Yeah. All of Flint went down like that. Yeah. There's, there's a process between the sixth ray and the process between the second ray. And there's, it's, it's a transcending process. New group of world servers, you know, they, it is really in the effect of working. Yeah. But the difficulty is to transmute the past and make it right. So in history, in, in the history of the avatar, there's an influence that comes from transmission. And that transmission is the key to the rule. Key to the rule, can't be broken. Yeah? It's the incarnation of the tukus. Yeah? The manifestation, emanations of the avatar. Yeah? And they're rare in their process, but the closest ones to the avatar are the ones who get the biggest healing. They get the biggest effect. And it, it doesn't you know, make them walk on clouds or anything like that. They're just as, as anybody else is, you know. But the transmission, the opportunity of transmission of those people and how they transform in their life due to their relationship with the avatar, which is a hundred times greater and faster than it is for the Sangha, yeah? So that's called the Dharma. The Dharma directly influences the relationship of the Tukus because they're incarnated Dharma masters. Yeah? They've lived within that relationship. So all people that there, are, there could be millions of people within this realm that are under the influence of having taken refuge over the last 2,000 years and under the influence of being able to receive transmission at the most powerful way. Yeah. Yeah, just the most powerful way. But we have to look back at history in order to cleanse the reality that we've had in a, in a dogma of illusion around goddesses and demigods. Yeah? 
Because if we study Krishna, if we study Shiva, if we study any of the relationships of the avatar, there's always a complement to the avatar. Yeah? And that complement is a blended duality. It's, it, there's no separation between those two beings. Yeah? They're both healthy, not unhealthy. Yeah? But the difference is that the female is the six-ray quality. She's the devotee. By nature, she's a devotee. Yeah? And by nature, she, she senses she wants to marry this guy. She, she needs this guy. It's all those things of attachment. But they're on a divine spiritual destiny. Yeah? And it fulfills destiny on, a, on the highest possible play. And it is really a trip. Yeah? And if you read it, and if you understand it, you, you'll know that there's never a time in this process that we do get stuck in our past of the illusion of the demigods. We don't get stuck there because the reality of the avatar and the reality of the incarnations and the reality of protection, the reality of Buddhism, you know, the second ray, a higher level of the astral plane, but it's not glamour, yeah? And that door is closed by the female complement. She closes it, yeah? It's not a responsibility, it's not a, a, a dredge of, uh, you know, uh, you know, having to go through all this, well, I got to close that door. It's not that. It's just that that is what is. That's how simple it is. It's between the influence of the avatar and the influence of receptivity, the receiving, yeah? And as in, there's no quickening in it because it's all in relationship to the earth. The female aspect is directly connected to the earth. Yeah, so all changes can be transmitted into the earth and heal the earth through transmission of the Sangha, the Dharma, and the Buddha. Yeah, does that make sense? And these are real people. They're, these are, these are, uh, we're very lucky. And long time has this work been going on of raising this up from unhealthy to healthy, you know, un in transmission and change the chakras of people who reincarnate as tukus so that they can have majority levels of second ray, even in their soul, have a second ray soul. That's incredibly high. Yeah, it's um, unfathomable you know, to have a second ray soul, to have strong seventh ray processes. That's unbelievable you know, for that energy to come through because that is a perfect transmission for change. And nothing against anything, it fulfills destiny. It brings people, places, and things together to fulfill the plan of the Lord. Yeah? That's impressive. Yeah? And that's how it works. If you look at this healthy, the healthy relationship, that fifth ray leaves. All the plan of us going to Mars, all this bullshit of wasted money and all this wrongdoing in world and everything, that really gets on the energy of the female complement. You know, all that, that wrongness is real wrong. You know? And it's not like anything is known. It's just that it is wrong. You know? It can't be, can't be agreed upon, can't go along with that. Because in reality of this healthy side, there is a seventh ray in the trust of the plan being worked out by the Lord. You know? Just in trust, because that seventh ray goes to the Holy Spirit, yeah? and it's directly connected, and the Lord is the Holy Spirit. So it, it takes away the pressure, it takes away the, the guilt, it takes away the, the thinking that, you know, false, you know, illusions that people can get caught up in when they become a disciple, when they become a real monk, when they become a real nun. You know, you actually get burnt out of the relationship or the possibility of falling into delusions of grandeur. Yeah? And that's mainly because these energies get healed. And if that fourth ray goes down here, that's for the earth. That's the energy of the earth. Yeah. Our ability to imagine if, if we would like to have things done, well, what if our thinking, our liking have to have things done gets a phone call two seconds later of exactly how that's going to get done and the cooperation of so many things. Yeah. In spirituality, that's called Maha Kohan. You know, it's a governing body that influences the working out of the plan within governments, within people, within nations, you know, in social systems, 
yeah? Even down to the smallest faction of a family, the Maha Kohan influence helps to bring that into harmony, yeah? And that's where protection comes from. The plan works itself out because we have healthy chakras, yeah? And it's held by the hierarchy on the higher levels, and it's working out the opposite of the illusion, yeah? There's a, a turning over the influence of lower nature into higher nature, yeah, in an agreed upon way, without having to be anybody's fault of lower nature, other than the fact of humanity did that. Created channeling and demigods and lies and illusion, and every time there was an incarnation of the avatar, so many waves of bullshit had to be gone through in order to see the avatar or recognize the event. Yeah, because it's all caught up in these previous illusions of demigods, all of India, all of Judaism, yeah, all of everything. Yeah. So we're going to do puja. It's called coming destiny. And I'm going to do the invocation of repeat after me. I invoke the power, the love, and the wisdom of my ashram, soul, and monad. To guide me into the right activity in the plan. To clarify and stimulate my mind. To, and my mind. To, transform and to transform and transmute my feelings and emotions. To energize and vitalize and heal my physical and etheric body. So there is a normal flow of energy in my physical and etheric body. Through this day and every day, I ask this in the name of the Christ to serve the One. All in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just to point one more thing out. <laughs> if you look at the screen, you see the healthy image. That's the one. That doesn't mean the one Jesus or the one God or the one anything. Other than we are all one. Yeah, the one. Yeah, does that make sense? Because over here on this other side, we cannot feel that. We can't sense it. We can't experience it. We can't understand it. You know, we are in a separate place. And we're working out the conflict of being a mess. And there's chaos and war and hostility and killing. All the wrong things that could possibly happen are going on in this unhealthy place. Because we are not one. Yeah? You know, so it's this, this healthiness that gives us God. And that influence, it gives us oneness. Yeah? And you can't harm somebody. You can't be anything but compassion. And you can't be anything but the ability to be, learn to be calm, learn to be receptive. And in that, you'll walk in another person's shoes and you'll give that person balance. Yeah, where they don't have balance. That's what you're gonna experience when you do that. Because you will suffer. You will suffer that they have imbalance. If you ever come with me, uh, when I go and be with people and anything, I talk with them and I, you know, they don't want to tell me that they've got all these needs, you know. And, but I have to go through a whole process of explaining, you know, I'll, you know, I'm here to help, you know, and I understand you don't have this and I understand you, you have these and this and that. 
And all of that's because you're walking in the person's shoes. And this goes way before I ever get there. There's times when I will be in my uh, place where I'm, I have to gather money that I'm going to give away. You know, and, and I go, okay, put uh, 1000 in this envelope, put 700 in that envelope, put 1100 in this envelope, put 600 in that, just spontaneously. I have no reasoning behind it, but I know that I need separate envelopes. So I just do it. And then when I get to places, I go through this process and I talk to people and I say, da da da, you know, you, oh yeah, well, you also need this and you also need this and you, you definitely need this, right? Don't you? Yes? Okay, so let's figure out how much that comes to. And that comes to the exact amount of one of those envelopes. You know, and I just keep going from one to the next. And there's the whole thing is an empathetic understanding that brings harmony and peace. Yeah, and but you can't get it unless you 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 don't um, project any kind of assumption. You know, you you have to kind of take another breath and ask the question again. You know, and see if they'll come up with it. And if they don't, then I I'll say what it is. You know, and it's always right. You know, and you'll gain that. You will become that. You will walk in people's shoes, and you will do no harm. And you, you have, it's not about because you do harm or anything like that, but it, you have no idea what it's like to not do harm and know it. And know it. And actually bring people into a balanced place and know it. You know, not just assume it and, and hope for it and all that kind of stuff. There is a process in this. When you become that second ray and you become one, you, know, you could do these things. Yeah, and it, it will be just like the guy working on the plants, you know, saying we don't need all those farms and we can do this in a building. It took a lot of hardship to get to that decision and work through those problems, you know. But he did it because of his feeling of oneness. And, and it, it gives energy to being able to fulfill something, yeah. Because you're not getting it psychically from doubt. You're getting it from the future. Yeah. And it's an intuitive gift that you're going to get. You, you own it. Yeah. It's yours to experience. You know, this Holy Spirit, a healthy, it's a beginning process is when you take a relationship with the Lord, the first thing you get is the Holy Spirit. And that means you get a better mind, a better body, a better emotional body. And all you got to do is ask for it. Yeah. You got a problem. You got to sit back, relax, and ask. And then you'll feel better, you know. Oh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not attached to having this happen, but I am the one who's going to make it happen, you know. That kind of thing. You could do that, you know, and watch it begin to happen. Be calm. Let it move through, yeah. Because everything is a calling, and that's where the gift comes in, yeah. It's all about getting the Holy Spirit its opportunity and to fulfill that opportunity with calmness because it, it's temptation, you know, up to that point, you know, because you could twist it all up, you can turn it into chaos, it could become a bitter problem, yeah, but if you stay calm and move with it, you'll be amazed what happens when it gets into the light and a collective consciousness comes into it, and, you know, I mean, Tara senses it all the time. She was working with American Indians in the last week or so, and just in the process of doing what she does and being calm and everything, all of a sudden, there was contacts and food from everywhere and circumstances, you know, and just coming together, you know. And it's what happens, you know, if you stay calm and you take it in a different direction rather than under will and force. And it's got to be like this and it's got to be this way, yeah. Because it's a fulfillment of a plan and you're here to fulfill that plan. You know, that's what this puja is about, you know, the ashram is that this is our planet. And I don't want anybody to try and talk me into to thinking that it's not a good planet, it's going to be destroyed by any reason whatsoever, and that it's not God's planet. This is God's planet, and we're here to caretake it and live on it and build more trees and make things better. Yeah? All right, so let's do this, Pooja. Close your eyes and relax. <laughs> Relax yourself, focus yourself in the soul, then sound the Om. 
breathe it out upon the world of all mankind. And quietly, without sound, express the will of God moves the world. This is a thought you should keep while expressing the own. Then say slowly and thoughtfully, the past has gone, I am the past, it makes me what I am, the future comes, I also am the coming destiny, and therefore I am that. The present flows from out the past, the future colors that which is, I make the future also by my present knowledge of the past and the beauty of the present, and therefore I am that I am. Sound the Om three times softly. Disappear the 
the same way. Then send a disc or a wheel of a radiant electric blue, which rolls along the golden path, but which does not enter through the door, but remains there, hiding the door from sight. Picture then yourself as standing before the electric blue disc, having traversed the golden path, and there, meditating upon the following words. I am the way myself, the door I am. I am the golden path, and in the light, of my own light, I tread the way, I enter through the door, I turn and radiate. Sound the own three times, breathing it out upon the world from the highest point in your consciousness. Within their hearts is rest. They run not here or there, but from a point of peace and rest. That which upon the surface fails and hides the real begins to disappear. And from the heart at rest a beam of dissipating force projects, blends with the shining light, and then the mist of all mankind's creation disappears. They come and they observe. They own the eye of vision. Likewise, they own the eye of right direction. Of all empowered forces, they see the glamour of the world and seeing, they note behind it all the true, the beautiful, and the real. Then through the eye of the Buddha eye comes the power to drive away the veiling, swirling glamours of that glamorous world. They stand, they rest, they observe. Such are their lives, and such the service that they render to the world of mankind. O 
focus upon the power to stand within the light, leading to right reflection of the light. The power to rest in spiritual being, so as to focus the soul within the chosen field of service. The power to attain right observation, so as to see correctly that which should be done. Your soul energy normally finds expression through the highest quality of mind. So the process is that uh, you're sitting on an earth with trillions of people and you see the chaos that goes on and you cannot do much about it. Yeah. And that 
that is that's what keeps you a lot in that sixth ray solar plex. As you take refuge and use it, practice it, yeah, then that process uh, lends more. Like here, I built this Shambhala Planetary Healing Center. Yeah, it has seven pyramids. It has four etheric earth etheric weavers in the corner of each of six pyramids in the form of a six-pointed star. Yeah, and the influence of that is highly elemental, highly Davic. Yeah, very fourth ray, very seventh ray, yeah, very second ray, very third ray, very first ray. All the rays are flowing through this center in a cosmic way and in a planetary way, in a soulful way. Yeah, so I can radiate what it is I have the ability to do because I, I do this and I have healing abilities, yeah, and and I choose to be expressive as a Buddhist, you know, because I, I want people to be more harmless in my teaching. If it's just Christianity, you almost got anything. You can have guns, you can do all this kind of crap. You know, so that, it's just for me, it's not a foundation to stand on, you know. So I stand on Buddhism and harmlessness and a right way of a better understanding, trying to get a ground in this as to why I would choose this particular direction. It's mainly because you know, I'm a healer, you know, and I'm strong second ray, you know, but that quality is, is a detriment on a planet like this because it, there's a lot of suffering that comes with it. You know, you absorb everything, everything. So as I stand on the earth and I build a pyramid system and, you know, and I sit in the center of it, you know, I am 24-7 hit by everything, you know, on every level and from governments to the whole planet to uh, events and energies that are happening outside this planet, you know? And if they're not good, they affect me, you know? And I have to transmute them, you know? So I don't have a way around that. And this is one of the qualities of the second ray. The, it, it's deeply absorbent quality. When emotional energy impacts us, the sixth ray astral nature, there is an immediate reaction and an emotional activation. The second ray emotional field slowly absorbs the impact to the full. The impact has tremendous consequences. The second ray astral nature will seek to transmute it. And in the process, there will be great suffering. Yeah. It's just the way it is, because the fourth ray has to be brought to the to the right position in life, you know, so it could be on earth, in the earth, so you can have peace, and you have understanding, and you could see God, and witness God, and feel God, and do the right things, yeah? So harmony through conflict is a law, yeah? And when you're, when you're the one who is the planetary logos, yeah, and you abide by that law, and you have all these qualities, then you come and you, you have this effect. Yeah, So that leads to secondary astral nature is exquisitely sensitive. It's, oops. Its substance is refined, and it has no walls. It feels everything, even though its reactions are moderate. Because its sensitivity, it is capable of profound suffering and yet of equally profound joy. In a sense, its role is to transmute sorrow into joy. And that's what I see. I see sorrow. I see suffering. And I know why. Yeah. So, and the process is what brings joy is, is the truth. Yeah. And it's not easy because it's a healing process. So I ask people to become Buddhists, to become practitioners of this practice so that you can receive the emanation of the second ray. You don't go through the suffering. That's done by Christ. Christ receives the transmission. Christ receives, transmits it out through the Holy Spirit, and then there's cooperation. That's what gives you faith. 
gives you understanding rather than channeling. You know, you can have faith in the fact that Christ can actually save this earth, even though it's so, so messed up. Yeah. So that's our process. We're, we're in, as Buddhists, you know, it's good to understand what is Buddhism. Buddhism is, the, the astral plane is the heart center. Yeah. It's not a negative process if it's brought to the Buddhaic plane. If it's brought to the Buddhaic plane, it's the nature of a person to have a relationship with God. They revere God from their solar plex. Yeah? They see the ideal, the good, the true, yeah? all the worthy inside of humanity. They see it because their sixth ray now is illuminated by the heart. And the astral plane is in alone, in darkness, sitting in the solar plex, judging everything with, with no higher mind, no way of seeing it with the Holy Spirit, and only being influenced by the evil spirit. Bad deal. Really not good. Yeah, It's a really, it's like the worst uh, movie you could ever write, you know. And it's the truth. And I've been dealing with it for tens of hundreds of thousands of years. You know, so that's why I can speak of it and express it and show you that this is not going down. We do not need to go to Mars. The moon's not going to collapse and explode and turn into little pieces. People will not turn into vampires. Yeah? Walking dead will not happen. Yeah? There are ghosts on the earth. There is poltergeists all over the place. There's ooga boogas. Yeah? There are things that shouldn't be here and they're here because of the astral plane. We have to close this door so we can help everything move on through reincarnation and find peace. Yeah. All right. So that's it. Enjoy. <laughs>